Hello, everybody. The same as Katrina, I don't know who chose that, that picture. <laughs> so I apologize for that. Okay, my name is Jose Manuel Sanemeterio. I'm working for Ernad as a program manager, uh, one of the IRIS partners here in the CREATE project. So I'm going to go uh, through a presentation that uh, try to, to show you what we are doing under the work package one. Uh, as has been explained before, what we are doing is trying to gather good practices uh, that uh, comes from our regions, from our partners, but also from other European regions in order to uh, stimulate the demand and the use of the advantages that high-speed broadband next generation as network, networks can provide to, to SMEs as a competitive, uh, competitiveness tool. So, uh, first I will uh, go through our approach. Uh, this is the approach we have in the, in the CREATE project. What we are doing is gathering these, these good practices about uh, what is being done uh, or successful uh, experiences in our regions. Also, other European experiences that we have uh, or that we can uh, explore how uh, successful were, uh, were and and what can we do at the time we are uh, running the project and at the time we are uh, approaching the SMEs in order to, uh, to show them how can they do with the next generation broadband and what they can't. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, uh, we are also trying to monitor or trying to, to have a picture about what is the current situation in our uh, partner regions in terms of high-speed broadband availability, what is the use, uh, how intense is that use, and, and what uh, are the, the main gaps to cover, or uh, how can uh, the, the SMEs can, can use the, uh, these uh, uh, next generation broadband networks to, to get the, the most from them. With this, what we are going to do is to, to go into other work, work packages in order to, uh, to approach the SMEs and also to, to monitor what is the current situation at the moment and in the future or after, after the project is, is coming to, to its end, try to see what is the situation at that moment. So, uh, in relation to the good practices, uh, we have made a first category uh, about what we are talking about uh, when we are talking about good practices, what we are talking about and in, under which uh, categories we can, we can put these, these, uh, these good practices. We have uh, ICT business centers. I will explain to you later uh, more what we, are, what we are talking about, but more or less are uh, advanced uh, ICT centers in terms of high-speed broadband availability, in, in terms of uh, ICT uh, services like videoconferencing, video surveillance, uh, uh, good access uh, to, to the cloud, uh, and, even, and even centers where the e-training or, or demonstrative centers in which the, the, the SMEs can, can find uh, good ways to, to explore how they can use these, these services. We also have the training and ICT, and ICT services, another category. Then the demand stimulation that goes joined to the, to the high-speed broadband rollout. When, when we are rolling in the a new network, it's not enough to put the infrastructure there. We also have to approach the, uh, all, all the final users, the, the householders, but also the, the, the SMEs to know or to let them know what is the benefit uh, for them going to uh, going to to use that that uh, that ICT that next generation broadband services and going through through that. Uh, there are another good practices that give support and advice to companies and to SMEs on how to use uh, the next generation broadband, how to. Uh, how to use these services that uh, can produce savings on them 
Uh, for example, uh, okay, we will go later on that, but maybe uh, the, the use of voice over IP uh, um, telephony in order to save, in order to save the, uh, in order to save money at the time you are paying, paying your, your your telephony bill, and other sort of collaborative tools that. Uh, that can be really beneficial for, for companies, not only for saving, but also for collaboration in order to explore, to explore new opportunities, in order to, to have presence in, in, the, in the website, opening, market, opening new markets, uh, having the possibility to reach other final users, other, other, other uh, markets, so, and so on. And then a final category that goes under the Boucher schemes in which uh, some sort of subsidies under certain criteria compliance can be can be used to to foster the, 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 the to foster and to impulse the the um, SMEs to, to get uh, new new uh, next generation broadband and, and to get new services under that. This is a table that is only a first approach. Uh, I want to say to you that uh, at the moment we are gathering good practices. We have been doing this work in the last months, but during the summer, so it's a difficult. Uh, uh, you can you can find that this is a difficult stage of the year to, to get uh, information or to to contact other uh, other partners, other organizations to to get uh, the information. But at least this is a first approach that we are working on. Um, as a point that I will make later as next steps, we have to go deeper on this and maybe gathering new good practices. But at least I wanted to, to, to share with you a first approach we are doing. And we will go deeper in the, in, the, in the coming future and gathering new good practices, hopefully from our regions, but also from other European, from other European countries. Uh, so we have here only a one, one list. I don't go. I don't want to go just uh, uh, deeper on this, and I will I will go ahead with my presentation, showing you uh, the what we are talking about uh, under that categories. For example, uh, first category was the, the ICT business centers. This is only a a, a sample of uh, what we are talking about. For example, we have. Uh, uh, some centers like Colab in, in, in Donegal, coming from Donegal, uh, the Smart World Center coming from the region of Nivre in, in, in France, and also uh, with the one coming from the Micropole Project in, in UK. These are ICT advanced centers in which uh, the companies, normally small companies, can have access to, to certain uh, services based on high speed broadband. And we are talking about, yeah, by the conferencing. Uh, other uh, really fast uh, high-speed broadband. And I think these centers are really important from the point that uh, the companies have access to these, to these services, but also at the same time, uh, these are really interesting co-working co uh, spaces. And there is a, a fact that when they are there, they start to, to engage, to interact with other companies that can bring these SMEs to opening new markets, opening new collaboration market, markets together, finding synergies with other, with other sort of business and that can be complementary to, to what they are doing. And, and I think it's a model in which, uh, in a natural way, the, the ICT services are promoted and taken by, by, the, by the companies. Um, at the same time, um, uh, I think uh, they, they they can find uh, uh, they can find also there specific programs about running e skills and so on. These this sort of centers running uh, prepare for the companies prepare bespoken or uh, tailor made um, programs to to promote e skills about the. E skills within the companies and also improving the, the presence on internet. Okay. Second category is the training and ICT services. Uh, as an example, we have the, the Getting Iris Online. This is an initiative in which uh, the companies have access to, uh, to um, a mentoring activities on how to have their own website, 
how to improve their presence on internet, how to improve their presence on so in social media. At the same time, they, they get, they get uh, the service as host. For example, uh, they can have uh, their website hosted for free, also have access to, to cloud email. Uh, but uh, the importance here is that uh, um, they receive advice on how to do that, they receive training on how to do that, and as a final result, uh, they can have their online presence and also uh, they can uh, prepare their website in order to, for example, uh, for search engine optimization, uh, they can prepare their website in order to be uh, in, on the first position when you when you use Google to, to find a sort of services, so uh, they can empower their, their presence on the internet and they can have access to customers that uh, they maybe they, they didn't imagine if they don't use this this sort of of uh, presence on the internet. Another sort of good practices are, as I told before, the the demand stimulation that should accompany to the to the rollout of high-speed broadband. It's not enough to put the, the fiber. It's important and it's a key element to have the, the fiber or, or the good access to internet uh, there. But uh, we have, in our regions, uh, we have to show, once the infrastructure is there, we have to show to the, to the final users what they can do with that. Uh, so, for example, we have here one, one example from Sweden. It was the first fiber to the home open, really open access network that uh, they not only uh, put uh, the, the fiber there, they also, uh, they also launch a, a campaign in order to tackle the, the, the SMEs or, or even the commerces and, and also uh, they, they made different uh, audiences, uh, bespoke, bespoke and seminars in order, to, in order to show them how important it is for them to do an initial investment on getting these services because uh, they are going to have a turnover from, from that. Other category that uh, we are including under, under the good practices we are gathering is the, the budget schemes. Uh, maybe you are familiar with these uh, budget schemes. Uh, so uh, when the, when the, the um, access to the network is available under certain, uh, under certain uh, conditions, under certain criteria, uh, if the if the connection is very expensive, maybe the uh, in order to to promote the use of this of this um, of these services, uh, the companies the SMEs can get a sort of uh, a subsidy to to get the to get the the broadband and, and to pay part of the of the costs associated to get the, the next generation broadband. This is uh, run by the super fast Britain and, and you can see there are some details uh, that is oriented for, for SMEs under certain, uh, only under certain areas and there are some criteria to comply with. Uh, the connection should be uh, higher than 30 megabytes per second and, and some sort of, of agreement on permanency of at least six months. And the last group is uh, programs that give support, a specific support or technical advice to SMEs, like for example the super fast business that is being run in southwest, uh, southeast, um, um, southwest uh, um, Britain. Uh, in this case, what the the companies what they get from this from this program is a platform in which they can have advice. Uh, they can they can get advice. Uh, Bespoken advice in order to see which benefit they can they can get from from using this sort of of uh, high speed broadband applications or, or services, uh, and 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 also how they can they can get the maximum or how they can deal with with, with uh, new opportunities uh, using the the high speed broadband. So this is let me say a snapshot of what we are. Uh, gathering at the moment, uh, uh, I will go later on on the next steps. But uh, uh, what I advance you that what we need now is to to finish the the, the collection of these good, good practices, coming hopefully from from partners, but also from other good experiences, in order to have really good uh, 
really good inputs and really good knowledge about what we can do in the next steps during the project at the time we are approaching SMEs. Uh, we should take advantage of successful uh, previous best practices to, uh, to, to, to make a really good approach to the, to the companies. And uh, in addition to that, uh, as I told before, uh, we need to see what is the situation in, in, in the create regions or in the, in the create partners, in the, around the create partners. We have to start to, to see uh, what is the, the state of the art, let me say, about high-speed broadband or broadband access in, in our regions. And we have seen that uh, we have here some issues for example, uh, there is a lack of common criteria at the time we are gathering the information from different regions. Uh, we have certain sort of indicators in one partner, certain sort of indicators in another. Uh, there is also um, most of the or many of the indicators are not uh, oriented to SMEs or to companies. We have more information from householders rather than, than SMEs. And, and uh, at the same time, uh, there are some sort of lack of indicators that uh, makes very difficult to have a common picture from the create project. Apart from that, there are a lot of, uh, or there is a lack of indicators at a regional level or even at a, at a city level or town level. So, uh, what we are proposing or what, what we have detected is there is there is a need here. Uh, to maybe uh, launch a sort of survey within our regions in order to see what is the current situation and, and to have, we can compare our situation with, with other European regions or even how we are positioned uh, within Europe. So, um, having this in mind, uh, what, we, what we propose, uh, uh, what we want to discuss with you in the in the in the short uh, in the short uh, period is to to launch this survey. We find key that maybe going through sort of certain uh, indicators that can be based on Eurostat because at the end is is the is the reference, and that could give us a really good idea about what is the real situation the real situation in, in our regions. I don't, I'm not going to go to, to, uh, through, that, through that proposed indicators. This is only a proposal to be discussed, but uh, you, can, you can see there some sort of indicators on uh, what is being the, uh, for example, what is the internet access from, for the companies, if they are using that to, to do e-commerce, if how they deal, if they are using that uh, to, to deal with the, with the administration, and also some sort of indicators that can be interesting than, uh, for example, if they are using, if they have channels like social media, or if they are using uh, cloud-based services. So we find this uh, a key element to, to agree on, and, and, and to have uh, at the beginning of the project to have a picture of how the how is the situation in Create, and then up, at the end of the project we should. Uh, have a second round measuring what is the situation and maybe we can have a comparison about the, about the success on, on, on what we are running on, in CREATE. Last slide, only, only uh, putting there uh, some keenest steps to do and this I have told before, gather new good practices analyze and assess that good practices in order to have a final pool of good practices that uh, in which we should uh, be reflected or should be for us uh, a reference at the time we are approaching the, the SMEs and also these, these key indicators coming from, our, coming from our regions in order to have a common, a common way to, to measure the, the the situation about high-speed broadband and how it's being used by, by SMEs or small companies. So, thank you very much for your attention and if you have any doubt or questions later, I will be delighted to respond or try to respond them.